Hi, this is Holly. In this video, I'll show you how I created a simple black and white swirled soap scented with a lavender mint blend of essential oils. If you're interested in the recipe, you'll find that listed at the end in a soap calculator. And all the other details and information will be in the description box below, including a safety section with links to posts and videos on life safety, beginner soap making, and other helpful tips. Soap making involves the use of sodium hydroxide or lye, which can burn your skin and damage your eyes, so be sure to learn and follow lye safe handling procedures during the entire soap making process, even while cleaning up. I decided on a simple black and white color palette for this soap. I chose to use activated charcoal for the black and mixed it with some sunflower oil so it would be easier to incorporate later without a lot of blending which can accelerate trace. But you can add it dry if you prefer. I really wanted the contrasting lighter colored soap to be white, so I prepared some water soluble titanium dioxide by mixing it with warm distilled water. This recipe tends to create a very light colored soap for me anyway, so if you prefer, you could leave this out or even use a white kaolin clay, which won't make the soap white like titanium dioxide does, but it will help lighten the color a bit. I have another charcoal swirl video that I'll list below where I used kaolin clay for the white and also added the charcoal dry to the soap. My next step was to prepare the lye. I used a combination of ice and distilled water for my liquid requirement and slowly added the sodium hydroxide a little at a time. If you've watched some of my past videos, you probably noticed that I used room temperature distilled water, but I've been trying to remember to freeze some because it really helps minimize the fumes and keeps the temperature lower. Once I was sure the sodium hydroxide had completely dissolved, I set the lye aside and weighed out the oils and butters. Next, I weighed out the essential oils that made up my lavender mint blend. I let the oils and lye sit for a couple of hours, and when I came back, they were both at 84 degrees Fahrenheit. It was just a coincidence that the temperatures were this close. When I'm doing a complicated swirl, or for instance with this soap where I was unsure just how long the pour would take and wanted to make sure I had plenty of time to do the swirl at the end, I prefer to work at temperatures below 90 degrees Fahrenheit. It's always my hope that the lower temperatures along with the recipe percentages, water amounts, and blending time that I use to make this soap all help give me a little more working time.
I stopped blending as soon as I reached an emulsion and then stirred in the essential oils. Once they were incorporated, I divided the soap into two equal parts of about four cups each. To create the black soap, I added three teaspoons of the charcoal oil and then blended to a light trace. For the white soap, I added two teaspoons of the titanium dioxide. I like to add it to a small amount of soap first so I can blend as much as needed without accelerating trace in the entire pot of soap. Titanium dioxide can sometimes leave white specks in the finished soap, but when using this method, I've not had that issue. I wanted to do a simple unplanned swirl with this soap and decided to pour from the end of the mold instead of the side. I elevated the far end of the mold with a towel and then as you'll see I slowly lowered it to make room for more soap. I was attempting to keep the colors separated and from running over the top and onto each other. I've done this pour in a slab mold before and thought it might work well here for some nice defined swirls between the two contrasting colors. I did oven process the soap to help it get through a complete gel phase so I could hopefully remove it from the mold a bit sooner. For my oven process, I preheated the oven to its lowest temperature, which is 170 degrees Fahrenheit. As soon as the oven reached that temperature, I turned it off and placed the soap inside. I did leave the oven light on for about three hours just to help hold the heat a bit longer.
removed the soap from the oven the next morning, but the edges still felt a bit soft, so I let it sit on the counter for one more day when I was able to unmold and cut it. Since this was a cold processed soap, I set the type of lye to sodium hydroxide or NaOH. My recipe oil weight was 1300 grams. I did have a little soap left over at the end, but I actually had room at the top of the mold for more soap. I just didn't want the colors to run onto each other, so I stopped at that point and used the rest for guest soaps. With a normal pour, 1300 grams seems to be the perfect amount for this mold. My lye concentration was set to 35%, which means my lye solution consisted of 35% sodium hydroxide and 65% water. I left the super fat at 5% and my fragrance usage rate was 40 grams per kilogram. Since this recipe does contain lard, I'll list a second lard-free recipe that I really like following this one. Once you have everything entered, you just select to calculate the recipe, then to view or print it. SoapCalc will give you a really nice listing of all of your ingredients, including the amount of sodium hydroxide required to saponify your oils. Thank you so much for watching my video, and I hope you found something useful here to help you in your soap making.